All right, what is up traders? What's up tycoons? Super excited for today's video. We got to talk about natural gas, okay? I've been sick for a while. I haven't been able to drop these nat gas updates as much as I want. But, you know, I've posted in the Discord here recently and I've mentioned it a few times on the YouTube channel here as well. This this is the most important chart that you want to pay attention to for natural gas. Now, this is the spot price natural gas chart and any time that it's gone under $2, that is when you want to start paying attention to natural gas. Now, we'll break that down in further detail today. We'll also go over a nice macro monthly chart, okay? So you guys can understand the monthly supply and demand zones when it comes to natural gas. Then we'll take a look at the natural gas futures on a weekly time frame. You know, we were able to get the rally up into our key zone and our key level up here, but it was met with strong overhead supply and we dropped back down. So when we zoom in on a daily time frame, what are the key factors that we need to pay attention to? And I'm also going to teach you guys about the anchored VWAP in today's video and why I think that the anchored VWAP is one of the most important things you need to use right now when it comes to natural gas. And of course, we're going to break down UNG and boil. I know boil is everyone's favorite or most hated stock to trade. Uh, lots of people, you know, are very interested in it. Uh, some people hate it there's a reason that they call this stuff the widow maker uh, so we're going to go over you know how to navigate the natural gas sector as a whole what it is that you really need to pay attention to uh, and then we'll break down things like ung and boil but i also want to include another stock for you guys okay uh, this one's going to be fcg all right this is a nice setup this is a very very nice setup OK, and when you take a look at the performance of FCG and then you take a look at the performance of Boyle, you can see why I'm, you know, kind of just cautioning some people against Boyle. OK, not everyone is meant for it. A lot of people don't understand all of the risks associated with it. And there's other instruments, guys. OK, if you look at this chart right here on this chart specifically, Boyle's down 99.84 percent. I mean, that's like almost as close as down to 100 percent as you can get. Meanwhile, FCG is up over 37% and it looks really, really good. Okay. So we'll break down that setup that we're looking at on a smaller time frame, such as the daily chart in FCG, uh, and give you guys just a nice overall update on natural gas. So be sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. All right. Uh, as always, though, the content provided on this channel is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be relied upon as legal, financial, or investment advice. So be sure to read through the disclaimer. And if you're new to the channel, I actually started a completely free newsletter for you guys. It's called Investment Intelligence. I give out free, valuable finance and trading content, and I also try to sprinkle in a free trade idea. Now, this is what the trade ideas will look like. I'll highlight the conditions on the chart that I'm looking at and then show you guys the chart itself. Uh, this way you guys can understand, you know, what I view as high quality setups, how I identify some of these high quality setups, and you can go back and review uh, the newsletter. Okay, there is a website associated with it. So it's kind of in a blog format as well. And you guys can, you know, check it out. You can sign up for the newsletter if you want those uh, emailed directly to your inbox every single week. Or, you know, if you just want to, you know, monitor the website and check out the website once a week and see what the new newsletter says, uh, that's fine, right? Either way is fine. Uh, and if you actually want access to all my different analysis, all my different swing trades, you guys can join the Investment Intelligence Discord using the link in the description below, okay? In there, that's where I post all my different analysis, all my different trade ideas, over 20 swing trade ideas every single week, as well as all of my intraday analysis for the day trade setups that I'm looking at. I've also got custom scripts and indicators to really make it easy for uh, beginners or people that are new to my day trading strategy. Those indicators and scripts will really help, uh, you know, make it easier for you. And there's also uh, there's also other valuable resources as well, such as um, you know being able to see dark pool levels, right? Being able to see gamma levels for specific stocks that you're looking at and interested in trading. You know, a lot of those things um, are are some of the things that other people sell for hundreds of dollars to really help give traders an edge. Uh, and you can access that in the Investment Intelligence Discord for simply ten dollars a month. Now. As I mentioned before, this right here is the most important chart when it comes to natural gas. All right, I've said this before many times, uh, and this was the chart that really got me interested in natural gas uh, in 2023 when we were over here. The reason being is because we were below that $2 level. Now, why is this so important? Well, if you look historically, right, the yellow line is going to be $2. You can see 
we come down below $2 and then we rebound, right? Over here, we come down below $2 and then we rebound and then we come back down and then we rebound again, right? Over here, we come back down below $2 and then we rebound. And here we are again, we went very, very low. We completed this head and shoulders. There was a huge, massive, multi-year head and shoulders, okay? And right here, essentially, we broke the neckline and we came down to the targets for the head and shoulders. Uh, and now we're starting to see a rebound. And yet again, you know, we're still trading below that $2 level. So the big question, okay, whenever you look at this chart is saying, hey, what is my game plan? Okay, because sometimes it rebounds from below $2 very quickly. And sometimes it takes almost a year to rebound. And sometimes it rebounds really quickly. So whenever natural gas, the spot price chart is under $2, then my interest is peaked. And I say, okay, now let me develop a game plan. Okay. Hey, I'm going to have a short-term game plan just in case things rebound quickly within a, uh, you know, one to three months. But I also want to hedge myself and have a longer term game plan in case it takes around a year for natural gas to rebound back above that $2 price level. Okay. And this chart right here will really help you guys out. I know a lot of people are really interested in natural gas. Uh, and this chart alone right here will just save you a lot of, you know, wasting your time, right? I'll just say that, you know, like a lot of people have been wasting their time with natural gas, trying to buy all these dips that just keep dipping, that just keep dipping, that just keep dipping, when really you just want to have areas of interest, right? Areas that are going to pique your interest and know like, hey, unless I'm day trading or doing a one, two day swing trade, you know, I'm not really looking and establishing um, some type of longer term swing trades until we get to certain key areas. And this chart right here is definitely one of the ones that I pay attention to the most. Now, when we go to a monthly chart and we take a look, We've got some key supply and demand zones, right? We've got overhead supply here and here, all right? And then we've got this long-term demand zone. Now, back in 2023, you can see how well-respected this demand zone was, right? And when you take a look at the previous chart, you can see in early 2023 is when we were coming down below that $2 price level for the spot price of natural gas. And that's where we are right here. And you can see that instantly we're met with buyers, right? Each time we come down to wick into this demand zone, we're instantly met with buyers. And, you know, during the rally last year, I was warning a lot of people, hey, this is no man's land, okay? When you're trading in between zones, whether it's supply zones, demand zones, you know, the, the levels of interest that you want to be trading in are in the zones, right? You're looking to enter here. You're looking to enter here, whether it's long or shorts, you know, these are your areas of interest. Not in no man's land where you have no edge on determining do we go higher or do we go lower from here, okay? And so, you know, once you understand those things, then you can, you know, start to get a better game plan. And when you take a look at the chart, what did we do? Well, we dipped back down into this demand zone. We dipped the lowest that we've dipped in this demand zone for years, for three years, right? We came down into there and look what happened. Buyers immediately stepped in and we can see that bulls are actually trying to potentially even push us back out of this demand zone, right? Uh, out of this macro monthly demand zone. So we're going to see, can we get some follow through from the bulls? Now, when we zoom in and we go to a weekly time frame, okay? Um, you know, we did get that nice rally last year, okay? Heading in towards the end of the year, you know, we had this trend here. Where we're making lows, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, uh, highs, higher highs, higher highs, higher highs, higher highs. And eventually we topped out. And I, I, you know, I kept telling everybody, hey, the goal here is to see, can we tag the 3.5 to $4 zone? That's what this zone is right here. And you can see we did that, right? We did come up into this zone, but old support, old support clearly turned into new resistance. Okay. And that's just a basic of technical analysis, right? You're going to understand these things. You're going to understand that old support typically will turn into new resistance. Old resistance might turn into new support. And that's exactly what we got, right? And it showcased it very clearly for us and established the downtrend, right? With a high, lower high, with lows, lower lows, and now lower lows again. And so now when we zoom in from a weekly time frame, now that we understand the macro picture and what happened you know, from the end of last year to this year, what do we see? Well, we had this huge gap down here in the natural gas futures. And what we've done is we've put an anchored VWAP on here, right? So that's what this um, little cyan blue color is going to be. That is an anchored VWAP. Now, what is an anchored VWAP? Well, a VWAP 
is your volume weighted average price. And so an anchored VWAP is going to be the volume weighted average price anchored to a specific date and time. And so what we're doing is we're looking at the average volume weighted price anchored to the gap down. And so when you're trading below this, this lets you know that the average buyer right here is underwater, okay? And when you're trading above here, this means that the average buyer is now typically in profit, okay? And so this is just an easy way to see, hey, are bulls in control or are bears in control from a specific time period? And so we're anchoring to the gap down because a lot of this price action is not going to be relevant to us at the moment. We're so far away from it. We want to see who's in control of the price action as of here recently. And we can see that, hey, bulls actually were able to break above here. And I do think that if we can maintain above this anchored VWAP on the natural gas futures, then we have room to go higher and head back up to that $2 level. Right now, the natural gas futures are right about 1.93. Okay, we've got some overhead resistance right around 1.964. You can see that we rejected it this day, this day, and this day. So three times we rejected this level. The more times you test the level, the weaker it's going to get. So if we are able to retest 1.964 again, it's very possible we could actually break out this time. And if we break out, remember, buyers are in control above this anchored VWAP. And most likely, the next target is going to be 2.172, which is the top of the gap. Now, Price tends to move quickly through these gaps. So if we are able to get above 2.172, then we know right over here, right around 2.41, 2.42, uh, that's most likely going to be our next target, okay? Is going to be the gap fill, right? If we just draw in a little rectangle here, you know, from the bottom of the gap to the top of the gap, um, you know, this is essentially our price targets here. If we can break above 1.964, you know, this zone right here is going to be our first target and our first area of interest uh, when it comes, right? And if you're long natural gas, this is where you're going to want to think about taking some profit. Or maybe if you're long natural gas here and, and we come up to these levels, maybe now you want to hedge for some downside protection, right? So you can keep your longs, but if we start to pull back, now you have a little bit of downside protection and you can determine, hey, maybe I want to cut both sides. We pulled back. I'll go ahead and sell my longs for the profit that I have left. And also, I, maybe I can take profit on some of the longs, I uh, on some of the shorts I have, right? And some of my hedges. These are some of the ways that you want to think about it. Now, options offer a really good way to do this. But the instruments that most people trade options are on, they don't really understand them all too well. And so what do I mean by that? Well, I mean something like UNG or I mean something like Boyle. Now, I've got an entire dedicated video that completely goes over the myths and the facts about the decay factors associated with UNG and Boyle, okay? It is possible to make money trading these instruments and it is possible to make money in them holding them and swing trading them, all right? But it has to be the right market environments. Otherwise, uh, there's things like contango and volatility decay that you're going to suffer from. OK, and these are some of the risk factors that a lot of people getting into things like UNG or boil. They just simply don't understand and they, you know, they can't really understand or comprehend why, you know, something like, you know, natural gas futures are going up. But UNG and boil are not performing the same way that maybe they should. Now that we've gotten that out the way. All right. It's very clear here that, hey, we've broken a downtrend, right? Tested it here, tested it here, here, here. And here again, and we finally broke out on UNG. Now, the key zone is going to be $18 to about 1880, 1890. Okay, let's just call it 18 to 19. Uh, this was old demand. Okay, this was, remember, we talked about, you're going to learn that old support tends to turn into new resistance, right? We looked at that natural gas weekly chart and we saw that, you know, old support ended up turning into new resistance. So if we do come up to this 18 to 19 area, we want to be mindful, okay? And we want to say, hey, there's a possibility that this old support could turn into new resistance. So maybe I want to, you know, move a stop loss up. Maybe I want to trim some profits off. Maybe I want to add some type of a hedge. Now above there, 1948 is going to be the next key level, right? And really 1948, in my opinion, is the really key level that I'm looking for, okay? Well, I want to see, can we actually put in a big base here, right? If we can put in a nice base here, heading back up to that 1948 level, then I think we can head up higher and UNG can head up to 2253. Now, a question you may have is, what are all of these blue boxes on here? 
Well, we talked about gaps on the last chart and you know, these are gaps, right? So there's a gap up to fill here. There's a huge gap up to fill here, a huge gap up to fill here, and even more of a gap up to fill here. We're very, very far away from those, okay? Remember that these gaps, they tend to fill about 90% of the time historically. The big question is when do they fill? And so you wanna ask yourself, hey, are we close to any gaps right now? Well, if you take a look, we're close to a gap down, okay? Natural gas recently gapped up, okay? And there's a gap down uh, that you wanna pay attention to, okay? It's right around 1650 area. And so, you know, if we continue to pull back here on UNG, um, you know, then it's very possible we could get that gap. Now, these gaps, they also tend to act as support and resistance. So if we were to get a gap fill and then reversal, that would be very good, right? That would be very textbook bullishness. What do I mean by that? We'll take a look over here, right? If we, we want to see a gap fill reversal, take a look at this gap fill, okay? We come down here, uh, and I didn't draw this perfectly, okay? I'm just, you know, eyeballing it right here, but we come down, we fill this gap, and then we get the reversal, okay? So, you know, even if we do pull back a little bit, that's one thing you want to keep an open mind to, right, is, hey, you know, maybe we're just coming down to fill this gap and then potentially reverse and head up to that 18 to 19.5 area. Uh, this is UNG. Now, let's take a look at Boil. Boil had key demand over here, key demand over here. We broke through that, and now we're going to see can Boil head up to this 23 to $25 area. That is going to be your new overhead supply, your new resistance, okay? Same thing as UNG. You know, if we can build a nice base here, that's gonna be a really good look. And then we can look to potentially see if Boyle can head back up to $30. That's gonna be your next overhead target, okay? But at the moment, just like uh, UNG, you know, we got that gap fill reversal here, right? Where we came back down, filled the gap, moved up. Boyle has a gap down to fill, okay? Right around um you know 17 dollars okay roughly or right around that area so you want to keep that in mind you want to keep you know just be prepared and be aware of some of the different scenarios that can happen and you want to prepare yourself for those and say hey well you know if we do pull back i'm going to look for the gap fill reversal and if we fill the gap and then reverse i'm going to keep in my longs but if we fill that gap and continue dropping maybe i'm going to cut my position right these are some of the things that you want to think about, all right? You know, we broke the downtrend here and we don't have a super strong uptrend, right? But this is a little bit of a bullish channel. Now, the big question is, hey, is this a giant bear flag that's trying to form right here? And could we potentially break down and head lower? Uh, that's something you want to keep, you know, in mind here as well. Uh, but for now, I'm really just looking to see, you know, can we get these really nice bases, right? Can we form a really nice bottom in these things and really start to get some momentum and try to head back up to that $30 level for Boyle? Now, FCG is the First Trust Natural Gas ETF, uh, and the big difference between this and something like Boyle or UNG is that this is an ETF that's filled with stocks, okay? Now, you may think like, oh, that's so stupid. Of course it has stocks in it. It's an ETF. Well, you know, things like UNG and things like Boyle, they are not stock-based, OK, meaning that there's not companies, you're not trading companies, you're not trading an ETF basket filled with companies in UNG and Boyle. What you're trading is commodity based futures ETFs, and that's where that contango comes into play. OK, something like FCG looks really good. All right. This is a large this is a zoomed out chart. And when you look at the large time frame for this, I mean, it's a very clear five wave setup here. OK, now, sometimes I dive into the Elliott wave on natural gas videos i'm not going to dive too much into it in today's video but you know you, the market typically sees a three wave or a five wave structure now your five wave structures those are going to be your impulsive moves that define the direction okay and then you know your three wave structures uh, those are going to come in the form of an abc like we saw over here and those are typically your corrective waves and so we got a very strong one two three and then what we actually had was a triangle pattern, wave four, that came in the form of an A, B, C, D, E triangle pattern. And we got a clean breakout and coming down and retesting it now. So it looks really good. I mean, the potential is there. The risk to reward is there. And after a nice breakout like this uh, and retest, we're going to see, can we continue pushing higher in something like FCG? And again, when you compare something like this to the performance of Boyle, you know, this stock is up 
Meanwhile, Boyle is down over 99%. When you just take a look at a relative time basis chart, you know, this is the performance of Boyle. And yes, Boyle spikes up at these times. You can see that FCG typically will follow and track along with that. But look at the big difference here, right? Whenever Boyle sees these spikes, you'll see FCG with a spike. And whenever Boyle starts going down, you'll see FCG going down. Okay, and then we start to see Boyle going back up again, and we see FCG going back up again. But whenever things go bad in natural gas, you know, Boyle gets really, really ugly. And you can see it breaks through its lows here in early 2023. And meanwhile, you know, since summer of 2022, FCG has been doing nothing but putting in higher lows. And again, the reason for this is because there's an actual stocks and companies inside of this ETF. OK, what do I mean by that? Well, these are companies that report earnings, that have revenue, that have earnings, that have profits. OK, it's not just a commodity based uh, futures ETF. And so, you know, if these companies are able to improve upon their business model and, you know, they're natural gas related. So, of course, they're also going to fluctuate with the price of natural gas. You know, if natural gas is trading higher. Typically, it's going to benefit those stocks that are natural gas companies. Uh, and if natural gas is trading lower, you know, typically it's going to not benefit those stocks that are natural gas companies. But you can see the massive, you know, uh, change in performance. Now, again, this is an ETF, so you can actually look up the individual holdings within FCG. You don't have to just trade the ETF. Maybe you can trade some of the market leaders. Maybe you can trade some of the sector leaders inside of this ETF. Uh, or if you're someone who likes to look for a bargain, maybe you can look for some of the laggards that look like they're putting in a bottom and in, in, in trying to show some types of uh, reversal or breakout patterns. OK, specifically, when we go down to a daily time frame here, super clean, double bottom. Right. I mean, what do you see? We have a bottom. We have a bottom. We have a nice double bottom base here. OK, we broke through the neckline. Very clean in here as well. And now we're trading right around this key zone. So if FCG can get above 2559, I like this one for longs. And I think it potentially can head up to 2755. Now, that's not a guarantee that it's going to do that. Of course, you can set price targets in between here anywhere. But you know, you take a look at that, and you know, the setup is there, and we're seeing lots of strength. Okay, we saw the double bottom breakout. We're starting to cool off a little bit at a key level and also a key zone that we tested over here, over here, over here. You know, so it makes sense. And, you know, if we can get a little bit of consolidation and then a breakout, you know, that's a good move and that's a good look, right? And then you can buy into strength and you can manage your risk accordingly with a stop loss below 25, uh, below 2530, below 2550, you know, however you want to define your own risk. Uh, but this is something that I'm definitely watching here currently at the moment. After the break of its recent downtrend in early 2024, we're seeing nice, strong, bullish consolidation here in continuation. And we want to see uh, what else FCG has in store for us. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to sign up for the Discord. Okay, it's only 10 bucks a month. And that's where you get access to all my different trade ideas, all my different analysis, over 20 plus swing trade ideas every single week, plus intraday commentary on day trade setups that I'm looking at. Uh, and if you don't want to pay for the Discord, that's fine. There's no pressure. Uh, you can just sign up for the newsletter, okay? That's completely free. You can get those emailed directly to your inbox, uh, or you can just view the website and, you know, however you want to look at it. Uh, and if you enjoyed today's analysis and you ever want to do a one-on-one uh, -on -one session with me. I've done lots of one-on-one -on -one sessions uh, with with really lots of natural gas people, okay? I've, I've dealt with people down seven figures, down six figures, five figures, trying to trade something like Boyle. And, and, you know, they have an initial plan and they don't stick to it, right? And so a lot of times people come to me and they try to go over day trading dynamics, swing trading strategies, uh, maybe a little interactive Q&A. Or a lot of people go over, you know, options with me, right? And, and you know, maybe you're not someone who trades options all the time. Maybe you just trade shares. That's fine. But you can use options to uh, hedge yourself, right? Or if you own a lot of shares, you can actually leverage the shares that you own uh, to, in a sense, get a quote unquote free hedge. And there's many different ways that you can do this. Um, so if you ever feel like, you know, you need a little bit of that one-on-one -on -one personal touch or one-on-one -on -one interaction, uh, definitely feel free to, uh, hit me up. 
All right. And, uh, you know, reach out if you guys want to do a coaching session. There's also this little buy a coffee button right here. Basically, a way to leave a tip or donation for all the free, valuable content I do put out, such as the newsletter and these YouTube videos. Um, thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, uh, most likely you're really going to enjoy the next video. So go ahead and click on this one right here.